friends, it's Brian, and we're going to work on some electrical wiring today because I want to run my Bridgeport mill at some point and my Monarch lathe. So that's what I'm going to work on. And this is one of these wonderful days where I already own the bulk of the components and it's just not going to be a giant pain in the ass. Um, you know, sometimes people give me a lot of grief because I save fucking everything. I got a shed full of crap, okay? But a lot of times it's because I paid good money for that crap and I think I can use it. So here's one of those moments where I have some 12.4 uh, BX cable and I want to run a one horsepower three phase motor. That, that shit's overkill. Uh, so you can see up there. Probably can't zoom in enough. So anyway, I gotta run the wiring all along here not a big deal and uh that's what i'm gonna work on so uh power's off that's my rotary phase converter this makes three phase power that feeds this panel here and we're gonna wire in on this circuit and i think we're gonna come in down here one of these so um let's get started with that Okay, so to cut BX cable, you need a BX cutter. And I'm gonna cut off way more than I probably need. And this has a little, uh, what can best be described as a little saw in it. And you just rotate it a couple times and it saws through. And then the BX cable basically, well, if you get it in the right spot, which I didn't. Well, let's see. So we'll cut a little further back. So normally what happens is you then just simply break it and pull it off. Now, in my case, I've got some damaged stuff back here. So let me get a pair of pliers for that. Yeah, these work. That's from that having been cut with bolt cutters when it was removed. There we go. Now, BS cable is um, kind of interesting, kind of aggravating sometimes. Uh, I think we're about to experience So I had to go to Home Depot and buy these. So these are little anti-short bushings and what they do is they stop this sharp edge of this uh, um, wraparound conduit or spiral conduit from damaging the wires and causing problems. So you just slide them over there and then generally I don't know why this one's being a pain in the ass, but generally they'll just go right in there. Um, well, this is solid wire in here, so that's part of the problem. So next, now that that anti-short push is in there, I'm going to go ahead and open up this. Now, normally I would do this after the wire was in there, but in this particular case, I want to put it in tight quarters and this is the easiest way to deal with it. So, in this particular case, it's going to go in like this, and then the way this fitting works is it will sandwich the uh, 
conduit and clamp it in here so it can't pull out. And of course, the cable for my camera is right where I need to be. This is sort of a, you know, thing that requires four arms. Or at least it seems that way a lot. sheathing is in here. I've got an anti-short bushing down inside here and then I've got this has an anti-short bushing. So we'll be right back. All right so we're going to go ahead and use this one back here and let me get a soft slow hammer. So dead blow hammer makes these easier to get these knockouts out. Powers off. this with pliers. Now, the only really significant drawback to BX cable is it tends to be a bit messy. Um, you know, EMT and uh, schedule 40, Schedule 80, and Rigid Conduit are all nice straight lines. Whereas, you know what, I wanted that big pine there. So the disadvantage to BX cable is it just isn't as clean of an install. It's really hard to make it look straight, so it tends to look messy. All right, so I had to take that apart so that I could get uh, the BX cable behind the short stub of conduit. And again, normally you would put this together once the fitting was anchored, and I'm reversing the order here because it's a little bit tight clearance, but this isn't something that's going to come in and out of here, so it, it should be okay to do it like this. Or at least okay within the scope of the fact that it's just a little bit messy. So get these nice and secure. Verify that's down. And now start working on threading this up. to work it's just it's just tight fit so it's more work than most people are going to put into it but again I want it to be neat and that's something that's difficult with BX cable to begin with so there we go we got that in so we'll now bring this uh, screw in to secure it in place and this is part of the reason I don't like the snaps is that they just continue to spin and then 
they don't do a good job of holding the cable. And you know, I guess you could argue there's not supposed to be any pressure on it, but you know, out here in reality. Again, we'll come in here with yeah that 20 sure wants to jump out of there a lot all right so this is relatively straightforward at this point we need to uh, ground it and then wire it in so I'm going to unwind the ground wire and we'll get that bonded first. Alright, so we're going to bring this over and that's more than enough so we'll cut that long. We'll come back and finish that later. long and we'll just toss that to the side because there might be something useful for it now I don't like that so I'm gonna bring this back around and I'm gonna try and make this look neat because it can That'll work right there. So we'll open this one up. And that's as probably as good as that is going to get. So we'll come back over here and we'll start looking at this. So we've got black, red. Red's going to go in the center, so that's the easiest one to do. So we'll go ahead and get it. And, and all three of these can be about right there. breaker it's only got slots so we're going to go ahead and get these opened up and then So these are side clamp. That's that's why I can't see what's going on there. And then this keeps coming out. So I think we're going to tighten these up.
nowhere were we before we were so improperly irritated. And then we need to relabel this as blue because that's what this conductor is being used as. That's our third third leg or third phase. Very small current draw. These conductors are significantly oversized for the load. Okay, so that's that's everything we need to do in here. Now we need to turn our attention to securing our BX cable. So I'm gonna get some clips and we'll start. All right, so I've got some number eight by three quarter screws. That's, that's sufficient and that should be safe. And we're just gonna start screwing uh, these clips in to hold place. It'll take a couple clips to get out of this corner here. good and then we're probably going to come down across the top of this plywood all right so coming out of here going across I'm gonna yeah my clearance looks pretty good there so I will come across and go up. I got more than enough uh, cable. buy a ton of these little clips so and this is where it just starts to look messy there's just no there's no two ways around it oh I said I was gonna go up didn't I all right
So really the only way to go up is to come up here. cheap Home Depot screws. Let me grab here. project. I just wish it was number 10 because then I could use it for the lathe, but it's not. for 100 please appreciation for Chinese manufacturing quality or utter lack of this much wire but uh, it is what it is so now the question is how do I want to lay this out and I think I really do some old geezer who used to who probably invented these fucking things who's sitting there bitching that I've got stuff sitting on it and you know what you can just kiss my ass um yeah you can kiss my ass I ain't got time for your bullshit you want to keep your shop different you do that this is my shop I'll keep it the way I want thank you very much have a nice day don't forget to fuck yourself on the way out Um, you know, 
if I had 10,000 square feet and a few million dollars, I could do wonders, but this is the universe that I live in, and unfortunately, I do have to walk on my machines in order to get them set up. So, and that started. But on a more serious note, nobody really appreciates someone on the internet making snide comments about uh, people trying to get shit done in their workshop. So if that's you, just click on out. Make sure you unsubscribe on your way off the channel. And for the people who get shit done, you stay tuned. Let's get it done. something about it. I, I just want a little more support up behind the mini split and I'm going to stand up on here where probably not the best place to stand but I am sure this can support my fat ass. I don't really need a disconnect from here to there, but I'm going to go ahead and install it anyway. Um, mostly because I have a whole bunch of them. Alright, it is time for lunch. I will be back. Alright, so I want to put a disconnect switch over here almost in the shadow um, but right where I'll be able to um, make use of it so I'm gonna go ahead and mount it here
switch back to a Phillips bit. So I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna get this uh, wire secured. So apparently I decided this was going to come in from the side. But not in any of those places. But it could come in from the side here. So we'll bring it in uh, from that side and that's going to require moving this. So I'm going to leave that loose until I get the cable terminated. So we're going to have to redo this one. So I think we're done up there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the ladder out of the way. And position the camera. Okay, so we need to terminate this roughly there. Let me get my BX cutters.
there. need to also cut it here. Yeah, I'm going to bring it down. Alright, so what we're going to do here is separate this just enough to get the cutters in. So next thing we want to do is knock this knockout out. Yeah, I think you guys can see that. So we get it started. And then we will remove it with pliers. Let me find my uh, square drive uh, screwdriver. Okay, so like the other one, we need to get this anti-short bushing in here. Usually twisting it a little bit will uh, work it in here. Sometimes not. Sometimes it'll get stuck in here, at which point it needs to come back out. It's really weird. These are acting like they're too big, but they're labeled for 3 8 That's good enough. Down. There it is. All right, that's what 
I get for trying to pre-position my cable. I should have secured it to the box first. and secure this. So, that should be enough to reach there. This is a 30 amp safety switch and it's okay to use it on a 10 amp circuit with wire that's rated for more load. Irritating they don't include a ground lug on this, but whatever. It's GE. GE is generally the bargain leader. They produce less expensive product. Don't know why, but it is what it is. Alright, so next, let me trim this. Even though I'm the only one that'll ever work on this and I know this is three phase, I'm going to go ahead and give courtesy to some unknown electrician who will follow behind me and wonder why the hell there's a white wire being used as conductor. And he'll understand when he sees this that, hey, the guy that did this gave a shit about code compliance and warning other, other people that this is a ungrounded conductor, which is what we call the hot conductors. That's the technical name for it. Nice and tight. Push that back down in there. Now let's look into landing the lug there. That looks like a number eight. Let me go see if I can find a screw for it. Okay, so this turns.
turns out to have been a number 10 screw, and that's fine, I have that too. Well, unfortunately, uh, 3 8 seems to be too deep. Let me go see if I can find one that's the right size. All right, um, by some miracle, I happen to have a number 10 quarter. it too stripped out and these are it's a screw problem all right let me go get one and try not to strip it out let me make sure there's not another spot this is supposed to be no this is not a surface disconnect Try again. All right, so I'm gonna put it in by hand because it's apparently quite touchy. And uh, yeah, it's touchy, all right. a thread issue as much as anything else. Uh huh. Well we're just gonna put that lug down here. Let me get another bolt. Alright so we're going to add the ground lug back here. Let's see if that's enough. Uh, there was a pre-punched spot there. Yeah, I want it tighter than that. So I'm gonna redrill it. Now ordinarily I would want to finish that out, but I want metal to metal contact on this. So I'm going to leave it like that. I want it to be somewhat tight. Okay, so. Fun part. Nope, we're not going to get in there with that, so I got to go get a stubby screwdriver.
that might have to move over here. It's not might, it's going to. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And then hopefully I can get in here with, I can get in here enough with this. this out and we're just gonna fish this in through here because for now that's all that we can do we're gonna wire the other side of this next let me get the pieces for that okay so next we're gonna put in a cord because we're gonna go up and we're gonna disconnect we're gonna have a, a plug I'm gonna put way if I want to move the machine I can without unwiring it. It's just convenience. Okay so this goes in followed by this. So 
strain relief is really, honestly, it's overkill. Let me think about this for a second. Yeah, there's other ways to do it, but I, it's just not gonna hurt anything for the cord to run up. is wrong for the wire that I have and I'm going to take the most expedient option available which is to change the device. doesn't fit. And that means I'm going to use something I really don't like, which is a snap-in um, clamp. But it will do the trick. Even if it's a pain in the ass to see. That's, that's about right. So let's go ahead and lock this down.
So, first things first, let's get the bonding out of the way. stubby flat tip. stubby flat tip but this might work down and I'm just tangling that up so it'll stay back there everything is together on this end. So now we can go ahead and close this. That would energize it. And now we're going to work on the mill side. So, um, it's been a while since this has been opened. I've never opened this since I've owned it. And we're getting really close to the moment of truth where we find out an awful lot about this piece of equipment. So 
first question is, how the hell is this motor wired? And the answer is going to be 654. Highly dependent on what wire numbers. So, the fact that there's a three and something else so if three was connected to the line. it would suggest a um, high voltage motor, but I think this is wired for low voltage. So without further ado, let's uh, get this old EMT clamp off here. Get rid of it. It's a nice clamp. It's actually a high dollar clamp, but we don't need that. And I say it's high dollar because it's got a really nice washer on it. I mean, that's just, that's a high dollar washer. Alright, so I'm going to fix this cable first. I'll be back. Okay, so I am securing the wire with some extra BX clamps.
That's good enough for that. So I want this to be able to be unplugged. So I'm gonna leave some slack. And of course, these have to be opened. be more than enough for what needs to happen in here so first let's see where the ground connection was all right so we're going to use this get rid of these things and I'll be right back. Okay, so one of the things we want to figure out is where we can attach the ground. How bizarre, there's not a fucking ground connection. Alright, well, there's going to be one, but we're going to use one of the screws.
this isn't ideal but at least it bonds the motor beautiful thing is this just doesn't draw. It draws 5 amps. That's nothing in the scheme of three-phase equipment. It's like a little 750 watt load. Really? The screwdriver jumped off the spot it was sitting. I know there's better ways to do that, but that will work. Let me get my screwdriver. So now we're going to put nothing. We're just making sure that nothing is uh, binding. Alright, that's it. Let's see if it runs.